Good morning, family. Hope everyone's having a great week. Hope you're producing fruit for God. And if you had a week like I had, then uh, maybe you're just walking in the valley of the shadow of death, right? And you're just getting through it. Well, I'm wearing some glasses. They're not mine. But I need to give praise to God for what he did for me. I used to wear glasses, um, just readers, just to see everyday stuff. And I never gave God praise for it. <clears throat> Currently, I've given all my readers away uh, to my mother-in-law. And I don't need them anymore. But I was outside a week after I had gotten out of the hospital. And um, I had been taking uh, insulin shots. And uh, I noticed that my eyesight was completely, like, deteriorated you know I was I could see uh, but both near and far were, were very blurry very blurry I've never encountered such a thing in my life and um, uh, I was outside doing something uh, in the yard and I remember I was beside the driveway and I was just tired of wearing the glasses already because I had to wear them soon as I wake up to go into bed, I mean, I couldn't see nothing. And I would keep the glasses just right above my bed frame to quickly get them and put them on my face as I went about just to the kitchen to, you know, make a cup of coffee. Um, and so I was outside, I guess out of um, frustration, I lifted up my took off to you know, I took them off my face and I raised them up to God. I said, God, I can't see. And I put them back in my face and I went about my day. That's all I said. That's all I said. And I did it out of just like, don't you see I need, don't you see I can't do anything, you know? And I guess he was a little bit out of frustration because when I went, came to my Bible, I couldn't read it without glasses. And I was like, man. This is from the enemy. He's tired of me reading my Bible. He's tired of us reading our Bible and he took my vision. <clears throat> I had to go get glasses. That's the day I realized, oh man, it was like a day or two after I got out of the hospital and I realized this was an attack of the enemy. I can't read my Bible without glasses. So I went to Walmart, picked four or five pair of readers out, plus one, negative one, whatever the in-betweens are. And I wore them just about all day long until I went to bed. But I never gave glory to God because about a week later, maybe seven days later, I didn't need him anymore. I remember watching the big screen TV and I remember taking them off and I could watch TV. I was like, well, this is a first. I can see the TV now without watching uh, with my glasses. And I realized, oh man, God just healed my eyesight. And I just want to give that testimony today that God can heal you. He is still working today. Jesus is still working. He says, I didn't come to be served. I didn't come to be served. I come to serve. Jesus comes to serve us. And in return, we serve the king as a faithful servant. And he rewards us because of all the rewards in here. But I want to give testimony to that. And so I also have a prayer request of my own mother. You know, she just got news that her pancreas is, uh, has got some issues. And uh, maybe she doesn't know if there are side effects to taking insulin and that you'll need a different prescription. So I want you to pray for my mother, uh, please, uh, women and men of God. And uh, ask <clears throat> that my mom doesn't have any weakening of the eyesight. Her name is Sally. So... <clears throat> If you will do that, um, uh, surely God will hear you for that prayer, as I've already done it. But um, here in Psalms 146, you know, 7, you know, it says, He executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. Man, another reason why we should give to the poor, another reason to, to drive out of your way 
and ask somebody, hey, you want something to eat? Or hey, I got $5 in my pocket. You put money in your wallet, God will send you homeless people. Uh, it's, the, it's the strangest events that happen. He'll send you people with signs holding on a sign, or you'll have discernment to know, hey, that guy ain't got nothing. And if you see him, and if you can't tell that, then you're blinded still. And I would ask to repent, and he'll open your eyes up. And if you're repenting and you're still going back to sin, then your time is not there yet. You are not fully convicted to turn your life around. But just wait. To just wait for your salvation. There will be a day to come and you'll say, this is the day I'm surrounded. My life is, or your life is chaotic, or your life is unfulfilling. You're like, man, I need something different. Man, I'm... Uh, this hamster will call life. It gives me no joy. And you'll have joy with all the rewards you get for serving the king. Plus, you'll have a handful of godly friends, too. Blessed is he, blessed is he who, whose help is the God of Jacob, whose help is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. All right? Even though I wasn't fully blind, I, my, this, is, this was the strangest turn of events. Maybe that's what insulin does to your eyesight. But <clears throat> I never I didn't Google it, how long it lasts. You're like, well, that's just the, it just it happened. No, it's not. It didn't just happen. At the, you know, my body just didn't get used to it, and I regained my eyesight. Some, a lot of people quit taking insulin because they, because they have trouble with their eyesight. And I guess they just control it with diet. But I never gave glory to God for taking away these glasses from me at uh, you know, at my age, you know, my eyes haven't grown dim yet. As God says, the silver cord isn't about to snap, you know, snap, you know, my life's not at the end, uh, as the fulfillment of years of, of a man, <clears throat> if he's with the Lord, you know, he won't strive with man forever. So he'll strive with you for 120, right? That's why you see some wicked people, uh, live, even a hundred plus years old, right? The God is striving for their soul. He's trying to find who's going to teach this guy about me. I, he's, you know, I'm not going to strive with him forever. Somebody, some servant of mine has to tell this man about me and about just speaking repentance with his mouth so I can, so he can go in peace and I can judge him righteously. But he has to know me. He has to confess me with his mouth. And so he'll strive with the man for a long time. Um, so uh, the first part of this video, as you said, you know, if you if you had a tough week like I did, walking through the valley of the shadow of death, man, sometimes I wonder, you know, why is it? You know, I didn't notice that I was moved to a different section of where I work at with with new people. So, you know, you don't know what you're fighting. This is a spiritual world. You don't fight against flesh and blood. You fight against powers and principalities. And man, it's it's like. The light went somewhere, and those people, you know, may have not been ready for me. But <clears throat> what I do, I showed them love, and there's a good and there's a good way to do it. You know how to conquer an area where you know they use God's name in vain, Jesus Christ, God, you know, and they say GD all, all through, and it spreads like wildfire. I mean, that cuss word spreads like wildfire. So, I mean, the women say the men. Well, you can quench it out. You can quench it out. I and mean, here, I'm going to tell you one way I did it. Um, when you, uh, what does it say? When a man gives gifts, he, you know, uh, a man gains many friends when he gains gifts, right? So, man, if you if you bring some chocolate or candy to work and you just place it on their desk, say, hey, which one do you like? Which one do you want? You know, and you give it to them, they're going to take it, right? Work can get slow or work can get... Uh, repetitive and you just want something sweet to crunch on or, you know, work or wherever you're at, right? And you say, oh, i do it in Jesus' name. You just leave them like that, right? Or you can even say, man, i do it in the precious name of Jesus. 
right? You're striking their conscience. Next time they say, man, Jesus Christ, they're like, they're going to, their conscience will be struck. They're like, man, they won't just say, oh, is that guy around? Is that guy who gave me the candy around? I won't say it when he's around, man. <clears throat> but I'll say it when he's not around. No, it'll, 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 it'll plant all the way in you, whether I'm there or not. It'll be in you. And you'll be self-convicted of saying those words out of your mouth. And um, you know what the Lord says about using his name in vain. You make yourselves enemies with God, right? But look at this. When you are bold to conquer like that, that's like a simple way to conquer, right? And you're not doing it. You're doing it really to save their souls, right? The wise wins souls, right? And I just want to say that when you, what does it say? When you, uh, when you feed or give something to their, your enemy, you keep burning coals on their heads. But you know the next verse after that is? It says... You, God will reward you. It says God will reward you. So even though I didn't know there was a reward coming, I did it to knock off the foul language of using God's name in vain in the workplace, right? And so what does it benefit me? Well, I learned tonight, God says I will reward you. <clears throat> but you're also you're also conquering in a, in a righteous, godly way, right? You're making the workplace more productive too, because there's more communication when there's less foul language and you're more approachable. You don't become a worthless person. You're not approachable, right? It's like going to a gas station. You got men out there smoking in the entrance, blaring, blaring music that's ungodly. You don't really want to go inside that gas station and purchase anything. You just want to pump your gas and go. But if they weren't there, You'd be more freely to approach the doors, go inside and shop around. But if you got a guy hanging out, you know, got his foot propped up against the wall, smoking a cigarette, blaring out some kind of crazy music, you're like, nah, I don't want to go in. It's probably filthy in there, right? And you have that worldly type of judgment, right? So <clears throat> it says God will reward you. It will be you. But... <clears throat> You know, I'm not here to heap no coals on anybody's head. I'm here to spread the name of Jesus and let you have peace, have a mental peace at least. You know, there is really no peace, but there is a mental peace. And if you want peace, you got to have a real simple, quiet life. And for me at my age, I'm still fighting. <clears throat> so, um, again, pray for my mother, Sally, um, for her eyesight, it went, uh, that, it's, that it goes well with her, please, I, I ask you that. And uh, know that <clears throat> I have to give glory to God, that I don't need readers to read my Bible. Now you say, well, you do. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe 20 years from now, but right now I don't want them, guys. All right, so thank you very much. God bless us. End it with prayer. Heavenly Father, forgive us of our sins. Let us have a good week this week and continue to lift your name up. And to um, this, this share your name with others and, and, and let the gospel go forward and, and let people see uh, that you are our advocate and you are our healer. You all are our avenger. You all are everything. You open up doors for, for us that no man can open. So we just ask for forgiveness of sins and a great week. God bless, family.